The tunnel path out of the football field wasn't far away. He didn't make it. Instead, he saw G. William and two deputies appear in the exit. The sheriff did a double take when he saw Jazz, then made a beeline for him. Jazz checked over his shoulder. Weathers had vanished. Break. Jazz, G. William said, we got a problem. We got a body. Two days early, we got a body. Chapter 27 Her name was, or had been, Jazz wasn't sure which way it went, once they were dead. Did name survive death? Irene Heller. Jazz gazed at her body tucked into a shower positioned exactly as he'd predicted. She hadn't been moved or touched since being found. G. William handed him a photo of the Isabella Hernandez crime scene. Not that Jazz needed one. Except for the difference in the shower tiles and the obvious differences between Isabella and Irene, it could have been a picture of the very crime scene before Jazz. She wasn't a maid at a hotel, G. William said miserably. We checked them all. She's a stay-at-home mom. Kids go to school now, so she cleans houses during the day to supplement her husband's income. Technically a maid, Jazz murmured. He was only mildly surprised to find that Irene Heller's corpse did not bother him. He scrutinized it, looking for any clue that might lead him to the impressionist. She was partly into rigor mortis. She'd been killed and posed hours ago. G. William, at the end of his rope, had asked Jazz to come look at the fresh crime scene. I'm ready to try just about anything, he had confessed in the end zone. I know I didn't want to do this to you, but look. I don't know if you can help or not, but can you try? Of course Jazz had said yes. He had used Howie Sell to call Connie and tell her what had happened, then followed G. William to a smallish, split-level house in a shabby but clean neighborhood just off the main highway on the east side of Lobo's Nod. And now it was him and G. William in the bathroom of Irene's home, where her husband had found the body after coming home from work. Her kids, ironically enough, had gone straight from an after-school event to the Ginny Davis vigil. I don't see any differences between what he did here and what Billy did to Hernandez, Jazz said, except for the fingers, of course. Irene Heller's right hand was fingerless, like Jenny's. Her left hand's middle finger lay on the floor of the shower near the drain. Sexually assaulted, he asked. G. William cleared his throat. Tough to say until we get her on the slab, but the M.E. thinks so. No obvious fluids. There wouldn't be. Billy was always careful. Used a condom, but... Jazz crouched down, getting a worm's eye view of the crime scene. I don't know. I have a suspicion that he didn't actually rape her. Not with his own, you know. I bet he used a, a, you know, a sex toy or something. Why? Jazz shrugged. He felt good. He felt powerful and confident. Maybe it was being needed by G. William. More likely it was because he was doing something he was good at. This guy calls himself the Impressionist. He's aping Billy's crimes. He has no originality, no self, no personality. He's an imprint of someone else. Billy raped women as a way of showing his dominance and control. And because it's fun, Jasper, Billy's voice whispered, don't forget that part. You'll know someday. Jas shivered uncontrollably. G. William, alarmed, grabbed his arm and pulled him to a standing position. Come on, kid, let's get... No, no, I'm okay. He shook off G. William and leaned closer to Irene Heller. This guy, he's not in control. He's under control. He subordinated his entire personality to this idea in his head of who or what Billy is. Worships Billy's memory and legacy. I mean, he's obviously studied everything there is to study about Billy. He might even think he is Billy on some level. The sheriff grunted. Jazz paused, but G. William nodded for him to continue. He's probably impotent, Jazz went on. He doesn't have the triggers Billy had. Has, I mean. Billy was compelled to rape, but rape isn't just something you do. It's not an easy thing. This guy, he wants to be able to rape, but he can't. Because he's just pretending to be Billy, he couldn't rape her with his penis if you put a gun to his head and threatened to kill him. He used something else. G. William cleared his throat and made a note on his smartphone. Anything else? Jazz looked around the tiny bathroom. 
He's accelerating his timetable. It took Billy two more days to kill Isabella Hernandez. The Impressionist is moving faster. He might know we're on to him. Figures he needs to start stacking up the bodies. Jazz thought for a moment. His next will be number six. I wonder if he'll stop there. Well, if he sticks to fingers, he can only go to nine since he leaves one behind, but six would coincide with the last murder Billy did as the artist, the sheriff mused, before he switched over to, a uh, Green Jack, Jazz supplied. Jazz turned to G. William. The sheriff looked utterly deflated as though someone had pulled a tab on his back and let all the air and all the life run out of his insides. The big red nose supplied the only color in his otherwise pallid, drawn face. I'll make sure you get a copy of the final report, he told Jazz, assuming you think it'll help. Yeah, do that, Jazz said distractedly. An idea had begun to form in the back of his mind, nagging at him, gnawing through the boundary between subconscious and conscious. He tried to ignore it, tried to push it away. No good, it was coming, whether he wanted it or not. I'm going to think a bit more, he said. As they left the bathroom and entered the master bedroom, Jazz heard a familiar voice. He looked over to see Deputy Erickson instructing one of the crime scene techs to dust the bedroom window. When Erickson noticed Jazz looking at him, he sneered. Jazz wasn't about to let that go. Hey, Erickson, did you just happen to be the first guy on the scene this time, too? The entire room went silent. Every cop in the room turned to look at Erickson. The deputy had gone bright red. His lips moved and his throat bobbed, but no sound came out. G. William grabbed Jazz by the elbow and yanked him out into the hallway. Jazz heard Erickson finally squawk. I don't have to listen to that kind of, before the sheriff slammed the door. What the hell was that just now, he demanded, shaking Jazz. Do you suspect Erickson? Is that what you're getting at? Because if, for your information, he was not first on the scene tonight. Hanson was. Of course, of course. Jazz had seen Erickson at Jenny's memorial with his own two eyes. He couldn't have been first on the scene this time. Jazz stared into G. Williams' darting, feverish eyes. I'm sorry, I'm just dead tired, and he just rubs me the wrong way. The whole world rubs you the wrong way, Jasper Francis. Should I go apologize to him? The very thought made Jazz's guts squirm. No, no, let it blow over. G. William guided him to the front door. Sorry I got a little physical there. It's okay. I'm juggling a lot, and I have to tell you, Jazz, I've been trying to keep a lid on this, but I can't do that anymore. The feds are sending some people from Quantico tomorrow morning, and Atlanta PD is sending someone too. There's going to be an interagency task force. I have to hold a press conference tonight. Already got my guys setting up. I have to put the word out. Warn whoever the next victim is. The next victim. A blonde, age 26, a secretary. Initials would be BQ. Injected with drain cleaner again sexually assaulted again, posed in a kitchen. I understand, Jazz said. I'll leave the squad, squad car at your house in case things get, you know, ugly. Translation, in case a vigilante mob decides that the return of Billy Dent's crimes can only be exercised by eliminating the descendant of Billy Dent himself. The old Dent house would burn pretty well. Got it. You want to be there at the press conference? Jazz stared at G. William as if the man had turned blue and grown a third nipple in the center of his forehead. I can say that you're not on the suspect list. I can say you're helping us. No, I appreciate it, G. William. I really do, but the spotlight, the center of attention. One more thing he shared with Billy, an aversion to public attention. I got it, Jazz. I understand. I'll do what I can to keep the beat heat down. They shook hands. In the sheriff's grip, Jazz felt not strength, but desperation. Then he hopped in the jeep. He needed to be alone with his thoughts. He headed for the hideout.